over the years, there has been so many changes when it comes to indoor lighting, right? We went from HID grow lights like metal halide, HPS, CMH to LED grow lights with heavy blue and red spectrum, often called blurple lights because you, you see it looks purple. And we went to full spectrum LED grow lights. And now there are grow lights with the ability to spectrum tune. For example, one common light recipe is running 100% cool white and veg, then switching to a cool white and warm white during the stretch phase, adding in red during the bulking weeks of flowering, and kind of going back to cool and warm white for the final weeks. What's your take on spectrum tuning? A lot of people want to know if it's worth it or not, since those lights can be expensive. I think the short answer is phasic light control, that phasic over the life cycle, which is spectral tuning, can be beneficial. But I think it's very much overrated. Now, I just pissed off a lot of um, lighting companies because they sell all kinds of recipes and they buy our lights because we can do all this stuff. And it's not that it doesn't can't help, but you hit the nail on the head. If it's expensive, the results has to justify the cost. And again, I mean, I have a slide in, that I've shown in some of my talks sometimes, but it, it basically says, the effect of light quality is overrated and the effect of light quantity is underrated now this supplements what i just said a minute ago because we can't our eyes are not very good light meters we can see colors of light really well but we cannot see quantity of light very well and that's of course because our irises contract in bright light and, and so it's, uh, we don't have a good perception of light quantity. Uh, and that costs money to get light quantity. Your electric bill goes up because you, you have to give more quantity. Whereas just turning on some different LEDs costs a little bit of money for the LEDs, but it doesn't raise the electric bill. Um, so we rarely, we've studied basic lighting control here um and it that it's it's beneficial but it's the effects are small that's the and, and now let's go back i'm going to give you kind of long answers and sometimes i apologize for the long answers and then i saw someone said in the comments once know those long answers exactly what we need don't don't try to make them short answers um i agree <laughs> Remember when we had, as you just mentioned, before LEDs, we had metal halide and we had high pressure sodium. And this has gone back 10, 12 years ago now before LEDs came on strong. And people would always say, use metal halide during veg and use high pressure sodium during generative growth reproductive growth and you would ask people why that is the growers and they say i don't know but everybody does it you should do this um, so i started thinking about it and metal halide has a high fraction of blue photons a high fraction of blue light and even back then we were well aware of high fraction of blue keeps plants short and that's enormously valuable in medical hemp. So if we use if we use metal halide early, we could help keep the hemp short. But then after it started flowering, it quit elongating, and you could switch to high pressure sodium because they're much more efficient. You get much bigger quantity of light, and it, we didn't need to keep the plant short anymore. So there's the fundamental reason we were doing metal halide early and high pressure sodium later. And those reasons are still true. You could use LEDs with a high fraction of blue early to keep plants compact and then switch to a higher fraction of red later to get more efficient conversion of electricity into light or into photons. Uh, Far red gets in there too for different crops. I mean, far red's 
really a it's almost like a blowtorch a little bit of far red can do a lot of stuff but a little bit of far red the first thing it does is make plants tall most plants and and that's really bad so you you got to be really careful with uh, far red we use far red all the time for lettuce that's a perfect example it makes leaves expand the stem of lettuce is so short that if that doubles from five millimeters to 10 millimeters, it hardly matters um, because lettuce is so short. So we can really use far red to make lettuce grow faster. But if you put it on basil and a lot of other crops, all it does is make them taller. And it's, it's uh, not, not as beneficial as you might think. Even though our, our studies show those photons are photosynthetic, they they certainly have profound effects on plant shape. And if you want to sound in, important, you can say plant morphology instead of plant shape. And then you're on your way to becoming an academic because you're using big words. So. <laughs> this clip is brought to you by Vivo Sun. Use discount code MrGrow15 to save on any of the gardening products. Go to the full episode by clicking the outro card here or click the link in the description section below. Catch you in the next video.